Do you have a dog that is reactive on a leash? When you take your dog for a walk, does he bark, jump, lunge forward? Are you hesitant about what your dog will do if you walk your dog up to another dog? Do you sometimes just want to turn around and walk the other direction so you don't have to face the conflict of passing another dog? Well, this video is for you. I'm going to give you tips and guidelines to help you and your dog. So let's get started. I'm here today with Lauren and Jackie and Boomer. Thanks for coming. Thank Appreciate you your us. help. Thanks. Okay. So when you have a dog that is reactive, that means they're not just pulling on a leash and then when they get up to a dog, they're friendly. Not a dog that is buddy buddy with everybody on leash but gets excited when you're far away. That's not who this video is about. This is for a dog that is reactive going toward aggressive on a leash. And how do we address this? We address it by reducing the dog's stress. What do I mean by that? Well, every time you see a dog, and Lauren, tell me what happens when you're walking Boomer and Boomer sees a dog, what happens? Um, so he'll go crazy, he'll start barking and lunging and just making screeching noises and going towards that dog. Okay, and what do you do? Um, I get stressed out because it's very embarrassing and I'll get frustrated and I'll pull him away. Uh, I'll try to walk the other way, go to the other side of the street. I'll try to entice him with foods and nothing seems to work. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a very common situation for many dog owners. So we need to reduce the stress that your dog is feeling. So one way that you can reduce it is not to have anything around your dog's neck. So you're not going to pull on their neck if he is on a leash and he sees a dog and I tighten the collar, okay, he's going to be more reactive. He's going to come forward and he's going to be more alert. So I want to avoid tightening the collar. I want to avoid anything like a choke collar, a prong collar, or a shock collar, which is so popular nowadays. What we're looking for is that we can help your dog to reduce the stress and accept being next to another dog. What causes this leash frustration, leash anxiety? Well, it can be caused by three different things. Excitement, overexcitement, which many times turns to frustration, and it also can be caused by fear. And I'm gonna give you a, a little story later on about a very wonderful yellow lab named Duke who and his leash reactivity and leash aggression was definitely caused by an episode of fear. All right, so here we go. We are going to help Boomer to relax. What are we gonna use to reduce those stress? Definitely the harness is a wonderful addition. This is a rough wear it's called a webmaster or a spider harness and it has a lot of different connections so Lauren had told me that sometimes he can get out of other harnesses but right now this harness is safe because you always want your dog to be safe they have a double-ended leash which is wonderful and one of those ends of the leash is actually attached to his collar as well as the harness so we've got a double set here for safety now what is another way to reduce stress food and we've got boomers favorite food cheese okay now we want to increase the distance distance and duration those are two great ways to reduce stress in a dog so when boomer sees another dog from 10 feet away he's more likely to explode but if he sees a dog from 500 feet away he's going to ignore them that's where we start so we're going to actually reduce the distance very slowly. And we're also going to have very short duration of time that Boomer is exposed. So it sounds like a lot of work, and it is. It's not a quick fix. It doesn't happen overnight. and doesn't happen in a week. But if you work hard with your dog, you can be successful. 
Also, if you need help, contact a certified professional dog trainer who uses positive reinforcement to help you with your dog. All right, so we're going to start out with the idea that we're going to use a stuffed dog. Now, I'm going to ask Lauren and Jackie to walk Boomer out of sight, and I've got my stuffed dog over here. When I uncover my... and feed him. Now, we're not going to go any closer, okay? And we're going to feed, and we're going to feed, and we're going to feed. So we know this is a stuffed dog, so it's not something that he's probably going to be um, interested in, okay? So we're going to take him out of sight, and we're going to make the stuffed dog a little more interesting. So take him all the way out. Okay. This time we're going to turn him around so Boomer can see him. Okay. So we're going to walk to the first cone. We're going to feed him. We're going to walk to the second cone. We're going to feed him. And we're going to walk to the third cone and we're going to feed him. Okay. Okay. Good. This is classical conditioning. We're not asking Boomer to do anything. Okay. Now, and to the third cone. Now, he's more interested. So just feed him. Three, four, five pieces. He's not barking, so we're making progress. Good. Okay. And walk away. Because can you see now how his ears are up? He's forward. Talk to him. Try not to pull him. That's it. Good. So this was a good time. If this was a real dog, this would be fantastic. You see, the difference was I turned this dog to face Boomer. So it becomes more of a threat. So I'm going to turn him back around. And we're going to wait a few more seconds. And then we are going to walk in with Boomer again. We're going to feed him at each of the cones. And let's see if we can get him to get all the way to the dog, but it must be on a loose leash. Okay, so go ahead. Good, and just feed him. Don't ask for a sit, that's good. Good. He's already starting to react to it. See the pull forward, so feed him a little longer there. We don't want him to react by pulling forward. We want him to be focused right where he's at. Good. So just go halfway to the next cone and feed him again. Good. Great. Now we only get one opportunity with a stuffed dog, or if you're doing this in a mirror, letting your dog look at it, because what happens is your dog realizes that uh, you are, it's a fake. Okay. So go ahead to the next cone and feed him. Good. See if you can get him to eat. If you can't eat, then we're too close, right to his nose. Boo boo, boo boo. Good boy, keep feeding. Good boy, good job, good job, good. And take him out of sight one more time. Okay, boo boo, let's go. Yay, Boomer. Remember, you're always trying to encourage. Get your dog to go with you. Now he's interested in that dog. I would love to get him to that dog on a loose leash, okay? so. We're going to see what happens, and we're going to walk in again, get your cheese just a little closer when we get to the last cone. Remember, if you'll eat the cheese, we're not too close. Good. Great. Now see if you can step in front of him just to block him and feed him as you back into the next cone. Good. Great. And keep backing in to see if we can get Boomer to the dog on a loose leash. Good. Now let him sniff the dog. Perfect. He's going to say hello. Good. Nice job. Good. See if he'll look. Nice. Good. Nice job. Good. And let him sniff again. Now what would happen is if Lauren would suddenly tighten that leash, Boomer's more likely to react. He's going to say hello. No big deal. Good. All kinds of positive. He's going to go sniff. Probably going to go pee. That's good. Okay. So thank you, Lauren. Come on back. And it's time to work with a real dog. So now, I'm helping you. 
Start with a dog that your dog knows. And then you move to a dog that your dog doesn't know. All right, so we're going to get one of my dogs, Nikki. She's going to be in an X pen and she's going to have a harness and leash on. Boomer's going to be on the other side of the fence. So now the second time Boomer comes in, Lauren is going to walk forward three steps. She's going to feed him the cheese. He can see Nikki. She's standing in the X pen. So let's try it, Lauren. Okay, let's bring him in. And we're going to go three steps and we're going to feed him. Good. So what we're doing is we're telling Boomer when he sees Nikki, the food comes. Therefore, food is good, so Nikki can't be quite so terrible. Okay, good. We only stay for a few seconds. And we're going to take him out again. Okay. And remember, the time that Boomer is out of view of the dog, that is the time when you ignore him. Okay, so if he's in view for five seconds, he's out of view for 20 seconds. Okay. So why don't we bring him back in again? We're going to take six steps forward. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Working with a dog that is leash reactive is baby steps. So we're going to do six steps. Five, six. And we're going to feed him. Good. Great. So once again, the dog's back is turned to Boomer. That's a calming signal. So now Boomer can just stand easily and eat the food. We're looking for Boomer to start to overreact, let's say. Ears forward, body alert. Okay, take him out again. Okay. And we use baby talk, anything we can do to get Boomer not to react. Boomer's doing great, but he's starting to focus a little bit. Feed him now, okay? Because you see you've lost his focus. Good, step in front of him. See if you can get him to eat the cheese. We're not asking him to do anything. The next step to this will be asking Boomer to look at you and do the same repetitions. Right now, we are just saying to Boomer, there's the dog. Isn't this wonderful? You get your favorite thing of cheese. Nine steps, that means in another six or seven steps, they would be side by side. So that's what we do when we are training a dog to get over leash reactivity, okay? So I wanna thank Lauren and Boomer and Jackie for helping me today. Please remember to consider subscribing to my channel and to ring that little notification bell. And in the comments below, tell me, is your dog reactive on a leash? What have you done to help the reactivity? And did you enjoy this video? So thank you. And thank you for liking my Facebook page. Bye from Diamond Dog Training. Bye. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Jackie.